Welcome back. This morning we are opening the books on the Austin Police Department and the military tech they've received from the federal government. It's been a controversial program for the last decade and here to help us break it all down is CEO and founder of OpenTheBooks.com, Adam Angievsky. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Allison and Sophia. Good morning, Adam. First, can you explain how and why local police departments are receiving weapons and gear from the U.S. military? So this is military surplus. And so, you know, when the Pentagon buys too much or winds down a war, they have excess gear. And this is transferred under program 1033 of the federal government to local police departments across the country. There's actually 8,200 local police departments that participate in the program. So let's talk about what the Austin Police Department got. So we just did an audit uh, starting at the federal level. So this is what the feds say is in the gun and equipment locker transferred from the Pentagon to the Austin Police Department. So you got a military helicopter that was originally purchased by the Pentagon for $850,000. You've got 13 762 rifles. A 762 rifle is a 30 caliber uh, gun. It fires a 302 round, it packs quite a punch. It's uh, most often used in the military as a sniper rifle. You've got six robots. You've got remote controlled pack bots. You've got four of those. You've got 10 binoculars, 40 telescopes, a ballistic, uh, a ballistic machine, and you've got 300 pieces of night vision thermal imaging devices and infrared devices. And as far as the heavier military gear and weapons APD has received, what can you tell us about that? So I think the operating question here is whether this gear transferred from the Pentagon to the Austin Police Department has a legitimate law enforcement purpose. And so that helicopter, you know, that sophisticated helicopter, I think the police department has to justify that. Uh, about 18 months ago, the city council, they wanted to have an inventory from the police department of the, of the quote unquote military equipment that they were holding. And at the time, uh, the 18 months ago, the police department sent some things back. But here's what they didn't disclose. They didn't disclose those rifles. Now, what is the legitimate police purpose to have what is the equivalent of an M14 rifle, 13 of them, in your gun locker? And I think the, the Austin Police Department, they didn't disclose those rifles to the city council. The feds say that that has uh, been transferred to the department, and that I think they need to justify the legitimate policing purpose of those rifles. Yeah, so Adam, on one side, uh, some might argue if the U.S. military isn't using any of this stuff, why waste it? But there still seems to be concern over how uh, local law enforcement uh, having those war-grade technologies is. Absolutely. I think, you know, responsible people on the left and the right have legitimate concerns regarding civil rights and the transfer of this heavy equipment locally. You know, for, you know, it is not only the Austin Police Department, it's across the state of Texas. So you have, for instance, the Texas Rangers who have procured four mine resistant vehicles. You have the police departments within the University of Texas that have procured two mine resistant vehicles. You know, are those two vehicles over at the flagship university right there in Austin? And we don't know where they're located within the university system. So look, it's a dangerous world out there. We don't want our police uh, being outgunned, but there's legitimate questions here on the left and the right. What about controls on the gear? Are there any, what are the rules? Well, they're, they're strict. There's four pretty substantial controls. One is an annual local audit. So the, the city council mandated an audit and report back to them 18 months ago. But look, the Austin Police Department, they're supposed to be auditing their gun and equipment locker from the Pentagon every single year. And this, there's state audits on a biannual basis. There's also, um, like if you're not using the equipment, you're supposed to send it back to the Pentagon. And, uh, you know, there's uh, you have to do annual training for the police officers that use this equipment. And you have to justify that. So there's those four audits every single year. All right, lots of good information. Thanks for chatting with us this morning, Adam. Sounds good. Thank you. That was OpenTheBooks.com CEO and founder, founder Adam Angievsky.